Why did Neanderthals have arrowheads 80,000 years ago? In the mountains of Uzbekistan, in a cave filled with the bones of ibex and red deer, the story of Neanderthals takes an unexpected turn. For most of the last century, the story of Neanderthals has been told as one of limitation. They were powerful hunters, yes, but hunters bound to the brutal intimacy of the thrusting spear, locked in combat with the animals they pursued. The projectile weapon in this narrative belonged exclusively to modern humans, a weapon of distance and cunning that allowed our own species to dominate landscapes across the world. But in a limestone grotto in the foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains, the story begins to change. Excavations at Obi Rakhmat in northeastern Uzbekistan have revealed two things inextricably linked the fragile skull and teeth of a Neanderthal child, and an astonishing set of stone points so small, so finely made, and so carefully fractured that they can only be interpreted as arrowheads. The sediments that preserve these finds are nearly 80,000 years old. If the arrow is present here, in Central Asia, associated with a Neanderthal child, then the old dichotomy collapses. Neanderthals were not simply close-in hunters. They may have lived among modern humans, shared in their innovations, and raised children who were hybrids of both worlds. Obi Rahmat may preserve not just the traces of a weapon, but the imprint of a community where modern human men brought new technologies. Neanderthal women joined them, and their children carried the blended legacy of both. The child from Obi Rahmat was between nine and twelve years old when death came. Only fragments of the skull survived, alongside six maxillary teeth. Those teeth speak loudly. Shovel-shaped incisors, crenulated premolars, and complex molars mark the child as Neanderthal. Yet the cranial fragments tell a subtler tale. The vault is rounded, not flattened. The parietals curve more like those of early modern humans than like the heavy domes of western Neanderthals. Here was a child between categories, a mosaic of features that cannot be forced neatly into one lineage. Perhaps the child was exactly that, a hybrid offspring, born to a Neanderthal mother and modern human father. In a region that lay between the Levant and the Steppe, such unions may have been far from rare. So in this site we could have modern human men making arrowheads, and Neanderthal women, and hybrid children. Mixed in the layers that held the child's bones were thousands of blades and flakes. Among them, archaeologists discovered a handful of minuscule triangular points. At first glance, they were unremarkable debris, but under the microscope, they revealed impact fractures and linear scarring that only occur when stone tips strike bone or flesh at high velocity. Experimental replication showed the truth. When archaeologists napped new points from local limestone, hafted them onto narrow shafts with bitumen and charcoal, and shot them with a bow into animal carcasses, the same patterns of damage emerged. These were not scrapers or knives. They were arrowheads. Their presence so far back in time is startling. Until now, the bow and arrow were thought to emerge among modern humans in Africa around 70,000 years ago. Yet here in Central Asia, we find them 10,000 years earlier, linked not to Homo sapiens but to a Neanderthal child. The explanation may lie in who lived at Obi Rahmat. If modern human men carried bows and arrows northward from the Middle East, and Neanderthal women joined them, the hybrid children of such unions could have grown up in a world where new tools and new bodies intertwined. South of Obi Rahmat, in another cave in Uzbekistan, the remains of another child tell a different story. Discovered in 1938, the Tashik Tash child was also about nine years old at death. His skull, reconstructed from more than 100 fragments, shows every hallmark of a classic Neanderthal. A long, low vault, massive brow ridges, and thick bones. He was buried with ibex horns arranged in a circle, a hint of ritual that has fascinated archaeologists ever since. The tools of Teshiktash were Musterian, the characteristic Neanderthal tradition of scrapers and points. No arrows lie in that assemblage. The Teshiktash child anchors the eastern edge of the Neanderthal world, showing us what pure tradition looked like. Obi Rahmat, only a few hundred kilometers away, shows us something else entirely. The contrast suggests that Central Asia was not a single cultural block. Some valleys preserved Neanderthal ways, while others, like Obi Rahmat, 
became crucibles of innovation, blending Neanderthal ancestry with modern human technology. To the southwest, in the caves of Mount Carmel in the Near East, lie the remains of another group that bridges categories. At school, more than ten individuals dating to around 100,000 years ago have skulls that are recognizably modern in overall shape, but still bear Neanderthal-like heaviness in brow ridges and bone thickness. Some mandibles lack chins, a trait more common among Neanderthals. The school fossils are widely seen as hybrids, descendants of Homo sapiens who had interbred with Neanderthals during one of the early expansions out of Africa. The tools found with them include blades and points that hint at the beginnings of projectile technology. Climate models predict that around 80,000 years ago, modern humans could have moved north into Uzbekistan after being established in India. If Obi Rachmat's arrowheads look out of place in Central Asia, they make more sense in light of school. The Levant was a crossroads where modern humans and Neanderthals met and mingled. It is not hard to imagine that men from these hybrid groups pushed northward, bringing their hunting traditions with them. In the valleys of the Tian Shan, they may have met Neanderthal women, who became mothers to hybrid children. The bones themselves tell one story, but the molecules preserved inside them add another. Mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down through the maternal line, has been recovered from both the obi Rachmat child and the Tashik Tash child. In both cases, the sequences fall firmly within the Neanderthal range. This means that despite the mosaic appearance of the obi Rachma skull, the child's maternal ancestry was Neanderthal. The same is true at Teshik Tash, where the boy interred with ibex horns carried a Neanderthal maternal lineage. These results fit the hypothesis that Neanderthal women were the mothers in these hybrid communities, while modern human men may have been the outsiders bringing new technologies such as bladelets and arrows into Central Asia. The genetics confirm that on the maternal side, the continuity of Neanderthal heritage persisted, while the tools and cranial features hint at admixture arriving through the paternal line. The story that emerges is not one of sudden invention or isolated genius. Instead, it is the story of human contact. Modern human men moving out of the Levant may have carried new technologies, long blades, bone tools, and the bow and arrow. Neanderthal women in Central Asia, facing the challenges of survival, may have joined these newcomers. Their children inherited Neanderthal teeth and modern skull shapes, growing up with arrowheads napped from local limestone. Such a community would have been genetically mixed and culturally innovative. It would explain why obi Rachmat looks so different from Teshik Tash, why the tools hint at upper Paleolithic traditions long before their time, and why the child's bones refuse to fit neatly into one category. If Neanderthals at obi Rachmat were using arrows 80,000 years ago, it changes everything. It means that long-range hunting technology was not the exclusive preserve of Homo sapiens. It means Neanderthals were not only capable of adopting new ideas, but of passing them on through hybrid generations. It suggests that the boundary between species was porous, not a wall, but a bridge. The arrowheads are more than artifacts. They are echoes of social bonds, men and women meeting across divides, raising children who carried both bloodlines. They are signs of knowledge shared and adapted, of a blended people who hunted with weapons thought to belong only to us. The old story painted Neanderthals as our shadowy rivals, bound to fail because they lacked our creativity. The new story emerging from the caves of Uzbekistan is richer, more human, and far harder to dismiss. Coincidentally, these arrowheads look very similar to arrowheads found in France, dated to around 55,000 years ago, and associated with modern humans, which are identical to a type of arrowhead found in Lebanon, known as the Xar Akil tools. 80,000 years ago, in a limestone grotto above a mountain river, children with Neanderthal teeth and modern skulls played while their parents napped tiny triangular points. Hunters strung bows, fitted shafts with bitumen, and loosed arrows at red deer and ibex. The mothers carried the genes of Neanderthals, the fathers the traditions of Homo sapiens, and their children embodied both. 
The Obi Rachmat arrowheads remind us that the story of human origins is not one of clean separations, but of constant mixing, borrowing, and reinventing. They show us a world where Neanderthal and modern human were not simply competitors, but partners. The children buried in these caves were hybrids, and in their hands they may have held the first arrows ever shot across the plains of Central Asia. For generations the Neanderthal has been portrayed as a close-range hunter, crouched behind a boulder or tree, clutching a heavy wooden spear, and lunging at the flank of a passing mammoth or bison. This image, cast in textbooks and documentaries alike, has long defined how we imagine our Ice Age cousins. In contrast, the bow and arrow has been celebrated as the quintessential weapon of modern humans, a hallmark of the ingenuity that allowed our ancestors to colonize the globe. Yet new evidence from the caves of Central Asia and the ancient valleys of the Middle East is overturning that tidy narrative. These discoveries blur the line that once seemed so clear between Neanderthals and modern humans. They remind us that the Pleistocene world was not divided into neat categories, but was a shifting landscape of populations that met, mingled, and learned from one another. The arrowheads of Obi Rachmat are more than stone tools. They are symbols of the shared ingenuity of humankind, of the hybrid communities that once thrived between the Levant and Central Asia, and of the capacity of Neanderthals to surprise us still. Thank you for watching.